Hello guys, Satyajit Patnaik here and welcome to my channel. You're watching the deep learning playlist and today's topic is about uh, vanishing gradient and exploding gradient problems. But before that, today's topic is more concerned about the chain rule of backpropagation. If you haven't learned about the basics of neural networks, including forward pass, backward propagation, what is ANN, what is a neuron, all these basic concepts, please go back to the channel or else you can follow the link which is provided in the description below and just go back and study them and then come back to this particular class. So today's class, as I told, it's all about chain rule of backpropagation. In our next topic, we'll learn about what is vanishing and exploding gradient problem. Let's get started. <laughs> Now, before learning about what is vanishing and exploding gradient problem, these are basically two important problems which occurs in neural networks. Now, why they occur and why ReLU was introduced, we shall be learning each one of them sequentially. Before getting into these questions, before getting into these concepts, let's learn about what is chain rule of backpropagation. If you remember the previous video, I talked about backpropagation and forward pass. If you if you haven't, maybe you can go back to the video, but in case uh, you want a refresher, you, if you want a recap, I'll just quickly explain. So weights are initially assigned in a neural network. This is basically your input layer, your hidden layer and your output layer. So Weights are assigned and the neural networks is forwardly propagated. So this is how the neural network moves. After each iteration, once we get the predicted Y hat, then what we do is we calculate the cost function. So cost function, it depends upon which cost function we are using. It could be like Y hat minus Y square, or it could be something like some something related to this. Now cost function is nothing but the error rate. So we have to decrease the error rate. Okay, and in order to do that, what happens is in neural network, we backward propagate and change the weights of the neurons. And that's how the neural networks learn. For the first iteration, maybe if your high error is quite high, in your next iterations, the error will reduce, reduce and reduce. And at some point of time, at maybe at 100, 200, 500 epochs, uh, then you might get your actual results could be 80%, could be 90% accuracy, depending on the use case. Now let's try to understand about chain rule of backpropagation. So I have already designed, I have already uh, made a diagram for that. So these are, these are the three different inputs that I have, X1, X2, and X3. Now you already know what these inputs are. For example, you are dealing with a churn classification problem. Uh, X1, X2, X3 are nothing but your features. That could be gender, could be age, could be location, could be anything. So just for our simplicity, just for our understanding, I have explained, I have just provided three inputs, X1, X2, and X3. Okay. Similarly, I have two hidden layers. So I have one hidden layer in which I have two neurons. Okay. So I have defined it as O11 and O12, and then I have O21. So obviously we know that weights are assigned in each and every connection. So it could be W1, W2, W3, something like that. So let's not talk about everything. I'll just talk about this W1. So I'm just naming it as W11 because it's the first layer. Okay. So I'll just r rub the other weights just for our simplicity. Okay. Now I have W11. So let's say this is for the first layer. So I have defined it as W11 dash. And let's say here it is W11, maybe two, something like that. Now, we already know in backpropagation, what happens is when your weights are updated, let's say W11 new, let's say, just give me one second. Okay, so my W11 new, is nothing but W11 old minus eta of derivative of TL by T W11 old. Okay, now here eta is nothing but your learning rate, LR. It could be 0.5, it could be one, it's a hyperparameter. Okay, 
So this is your basic formula. While your back propagation, your weights are uh, changed. Like, so what happens is, so this basically this this particular derivative of dl of dw11 dash is nothing but so when how this particular weight is changed when you back propagate this changes this change is also impacting this right so we can also write it as d021 with respect to d11 multiplied with d11 with respect to dw11 dash so this is basically your chain rule of back back propagation now if you cancel out it will still be dl by dw11 okay so this is basically your chain rule of back propagation now before getting started with the next topic which is my vanishing and exploding gradient problem i also wanted to explain something so in 1980s and in 1990s we had to use sigmoid function in each neuron or you can say in each layer so we were vanishing gradient we were having the vanishing gradient problem as we didn't had relu then relu was introduced probably in 2000s now if i am wrong maybe you can just google it out when relu was introduced but i would say it's it, it was introduced in 2000 or 2001 now before that in 1980s 1990s because neural networks concepts are not new they are they are they are in the books since a quite a long time okay and when scientists were working on neural networks way back in 1980s and 1990s they were working with a very low hidden layer network maybe two hidden layers or three hidden layers or maybe just two so when they were using hidden layers they were using sigmoid function now in sigmoid function there are some drawbacks let's try to understand the drawbacks of a sigmoid function now, before understanding the drawbacks, let's let's just go for a quick recap of what sigmoid function is. If you don't know about sigmoid function, I have already explained that particular in the activation functions video. I'll also leave the video in the description or maybe in the suggested link. Now, sigmoid function f of x is nothing but 1 by e1 plus e to the power of minus x. Now, if I plot the graph, now, if I plot the graph for f of x for multiple values of x, let's say for x equals to 0, x equals to 1, x equals to 2, x equals to minus 1. If I plot, what will be the value of f of x? Now, obviously, that will eat up our time. So I'll just quickly draw how a sigmoid function looks like. Now, this is how a sigmoid function looks like. OK. And this value is 0 0.5, this value is 1, this value is 0. So your f of x always lies within the range of 0 to 1. Okay. Now, when we are using sigmoid function in the hidden layer, obviously, if I go back to this statement here, when I take a derivative of that, what will be the derivative of a sigmoid function? My sigmoid function is f of x equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power of minus x. If I replace x with multiple values, I will definitely get the f of x value within the range of 0 to 1. That is the reason it is told that sigmoid function always lies between 0 to 1. You can see in this graph as well, right? It always lies between 0 to 1 in your first and second quadrant. Now, what will be f dash x? x that will be derivative of 1 by 1 plus e to the power of minus x correct now if i try to solve this in mathematics i'm not sure if you remember or not but there is a reciprocal rule reciprocal rule now what is the reciprocal rule the reciprocal rule is 1 by f of x derivative of that is nothing but minus f dash x divided by f x square. So if I use this formula, what will be the derivative of a sigmoid function? So I'll just try to solve it from here. d by dx of 1 by 1 plus e to the power of minus x. This is nothing but minus of d by dx e to the power of minus x plus 1 divided by e to the power of minus x plus 1 whole square. Okay. 
just just imagine the derivative of 1 by f of x so i'm considering my f of x as this particular thing so my derivative of 1 by f of x is nothing but minus of f dash x that means minus of derivative of the denominator divided by f of x square that means e to the power of minus x plus 1 whole square okay if i further go and solve this minus of d by dx of e to the power of minus x plus d by dx of 1 divided by e to the power of minus x 1 whole square so obviously this is a constant it will be 0 so what is e to the power of minus x derivative if you don't remember nothing to worry about you just take help of your google you will find it out so i'll write it down the derivative of e to the power minus x is minus e to the power of so e to the power minus x derivative of minus x so this part is already zero and this part is remaining the same e to the power minus x plus one square and this is nothing but minus of minus of minus e to the power of minus x right so it will be e to the power of minus x divided by e to the power of minus x plus one whole square so if i write it down here so derivative of sigmoid function is nothing but e to the power of minus x divided by e to the power of minus x plus one whole square now just try to put multiple values of x x equals to 1 x equals to minus 1 x equals to 2 x equals to minus 2 if you want to further proceed x equals to 3 and x equals to minus 3 so what is the value of this term for x equals to 0 it is e to the power of 0 which is 1 1 divided by 1 plus 1 whole square which is nothing but 1 by 4 which is nothing but 0 0.25 what will be the value at x equals to 1 you can take this as an assignment and try to find it out what you need to do is for x equals to 1 what will be the value of this one just x ke jag pe 1 dal do. it will be e to the power of minus 1 divided by e to the power of minus 1 plus 1 whole square find it out the value and write it down so when you do that your output of your derivative function of sigma it will always come in the range of 0 to 0 0.25 now if i try to plot it the derivative function will look like this so the derivative function of a sigmoid function always ranges between 0 to 0 0.25 okay and the sigmoid function always ranges between 0 to 1 so that's it for today's video in the next video we shall be taking this to our next uh, understanding why sigmoid derivative of a sigmoid function is used and what is vanishing gradient and exploding gradient that's it for today's video thank you guys uh, please like share and subscribe the channel and if you really like the channel uh, please share it among your friends thank you mm -hmm.